friends welcome back to another book miss video and today i wanted to share with you all some of the books that i've been reading in the last couple of weeks First want to apologize for disappearing for a little bit the last week has been absolutely insane it's been really hectic but it's over the semester is over and now i can just enjoy the christmas break and read and read and just prioritize books over school which is awesome so far this month it hasn't been the absolute best in terms of quality which maybe has to do with the fact that i was really stressed out with school and i guess i was in a slump because of that and so the books that i was reading i just was having a harder time really getting into. There are a couple exceptions for sure, but just overall it's been mediocre at best. I'm hoping that the rest of December is a lot better and I do have some books that I kind of have been saving for after exams because I really think that they're going to be great books and I just didn't want to be reading them while stressed and studying and all of that. So with all that being said, I have read some mysteries for Cloak and Dagger Christmas and I'm starting to get into more like holiday Christmassy books, which I'm really excited about. And I'm going to talk about the books that I'm currently reading first just to get them out of the way. So the first one, I don't have the dust jacket on me for it, but it's this um, picture book. It's kind of a fictional autobiography of Santa Claus and it's really, really sweet. I'm almost finished actually and I'm really, really enjoying it. It has some really sweet illustrations and it's just a lot of fun. It's kind of imagining what Santa's life was like as a kid and then what led to him being who we know as Santa Claus. And it's just it's a lot of fun so I'm really really enjoying this. I think by the time you watch this video I'll have finished this book but it's really sweet and I'm really enjoying it. I'm also really really slowly working my way through Five and Dime Christmas. I'm on the second story in this collection and it's okay. It's cute. It's not anything crazy you know deep or anything like that. It's quite predictable. All of these are but it's fun to just pick it up here and there and you know read a couple chapters but I will probably just finish the second story in this collection. There are four and then save the other two for next Christmas just because I don't want to get burned out by like the cheese <laughs> because they are a little cheesy but a lot of fun at the same time. So there's this one and this next book I'm having such a fun time with. It's also really cheesy but it's the kind of cheese that I can handle and that I think is really great for Christmas. And I'm talking about The Mistletoe Countess by Pepper Basham. This is my first Pepper Basham and I will say the writing is great. So I think I'm going to be reading all of her other books when I can get my hands on them because this one is so, so good. This one's set, I think it's not the Edwardian period anymore. It's 1913, so I'm not sure if the Edwardian period ends before that. But either way, it's 1913 and we have this girl named Graceland. She's really, really innocent. She's this rich American and her sister is supposed to marry this Earl or Duke. I don't remember. I think he's an Earl. I could be totally wrong, but... Her sister's supposed to marry him. That doesn't end up happening and Gracelyn takes her place. She goes by Grace in the story and that happens really early on. It's not a spoiler, it's on the back of the book, but she takes her place. She moves to England with this man, Frederick, and they start their lives together. And there's a lot of things that happen <laughs> because she's just innocent and she has no idea what to expect regarding marriage. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> I actually didn't know this until I think maybe a week or two ago, but there's also a mystery in this book. And so it works for Cloak and Dagger Christmas, which is great. So yeah, I'm going to keep reading this one. And again, by the time you see this video, I'll probably have finished it because I can't put it down. I have no idea where I put my copy of this next book, but I'm also reading Noel Streetfield's Christmas Stories. It's this little tiny children's Christmas story collection. It's really, really short and I'm almost finished this one as well. It's really, really sweet. It's enjoyable. And I was recommended this by Kate Howe. She had it in one of her Christmas book recommendations videos. But yeah, it's a really sweet collection as well. And now I'm going to look over the Cloak and Dagger Christmas prompts just to see what I have completed, what I haven't, because I'm not quite sure yet. So the first one's Partridge in a Pear Tree, alliterative title. Still haven't done that one. Second one is a buddy read and that one I have completed. So I'll talk about that book in a second. Third one is Three French Hens, translated work or set in a different country. I have that one as well. Four is Read in Nature and Go for a Walk. Still haven't done that, but I plan on including it in a vlog that I have coming out either on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. So look out for that. Five Gold Rings, Foil on the Cover. I have completed that one. Six Geese Laying, Have a Cozy Time Eating Christmas Treats and Watch a Cozy Mystery. So I guess it's a cozy mystery. It's a little dark to be a cozy mystery, but it felt cozy to me but that's probably because it's set in the winter. But I watched the first two episodes of the new series, Three Pines with Inspector Gamache. And 
the two episodes covered book two in the series so I guess I'm kind of spoiled now for book two I normally like to read the book first and then watch adaptations but I just needed something and it just looked so good so I watched the first two episodes really enjoyed them so I'm including that I'm counting that um for this prompt and I did eat some Christmas cookies so I guess that counts. Seven swans of swimming, have a soak in the bath, go for a swim or walk in the rain. Still haven't done that, but I do plan on walking in the snow. It just hasn't really snowed all that much, which is a little unusual for December. Here it usually starts snowing a lot towards the end of November, but it's kind of been a little more mild. I shouldn't have said that because it'll probably start snowing like crazy in the next couple days. Um, eight is eight dingoes dancing, a wild card read. Basically any other book that I read could fit this. So I guess I could count like mistletoe countess or something for this. Nine ladies dancing, have a festive night in or out to get into the festive cheer. I do plan on having a family dinner tomorrow, so it'll be, I guess, a very festive occasion, so that counts. And then 10 Lords a Leaping story with nobility. Mistletoe Countess has nobility, so that works. 11 Pipers piping, listen to cozy Christmas music while reading. I always do that, so that's checked off. And then 12 Drummers Drumming, listen to a crime narrative. And two of the mystery books here, I listened to the audiobook while reading along physically, so that one is done as well. So just a few more that I need to fulfill, but I really want to because that is the, I think, Sherlock Holmes level, the highest level you can get. It's kind of in three, I forget what they are. I'll put them on the screen, but there are like three different levels you get to if you complete the different props. It's all for fun, but me being me, I have to do it all. Okay, so I'm gonna go over the books that I have finished now, and these are in no particular order. I'm just grabbing them off my desk, but the first one here is an Agatha Christie, and I had really high expectations going into it and was a little bit disappointed. I did enjoy it. I gave it three stars, but it just didn't quite have what I was looking for, and that is at Bertram's Hotel. This one is a Miss Marple. I think it's the third to last, if I'm not mistaken, so I think I have two more in the series after this one. And it's set at this hotel that kind of kept its old-fashioned Edwardian feel, and even though this book is set in the 60s, the hotel itself kind of has this timeless aura about it. And Miss Marple finds herself there and this chain of events kind of unfolds. This elderly clergyman disappears and things kind of just unravel. And it was interesting. Like I said, I didn't think it was terrible. I did give it three stars. I just don't know what it is about the Miss Marple books. I don't seem to enjoy them as much as the Poirot books, which is interesting because I think I like Miss Marple more as a character than I do Poirot. But for some reason, the mysteries in the Miss Marple books just don't really suit my taste maybe I don't know but it was fun I did enjoy my time reading it I loved every moment that Miss Marple was on the page which is great but yeah three stars it was not a terrible book just not my absolute favorite this next book fulfilled the two turtle doves the buddy read prompt and that is Murder at Archley Manor by Sarah Rosette and I buddy read this with Amy from Amy of Hearthridge I'll leave her channel linked below please go check her out she's awesome um but we buddy read this book and both kind of had similar feelings towards it we enjoyed it but it just wasn't amazing. It definitely is more of a palate cleanser type of story for me. So I didn't, you know, I wasn't upset over the fact that this wasn't amazing. It didn't blow my mind or anything like that. It was actually a good read for me while studying for exams. It was very easy and light and fun. And although the writing is on the drier side and I felt that the characters weren't as well drawn out, it did remind me a little bit of Her Royal Spinus, just in a sense that our main character comes from I guess an upper class family but they fell on hard times and so she's kind of struggling financially and tries to find a job and that was just a similar story with Georgie from Her Royal Spinus but yeah this one I just didn't enjoy quite as much. So this book is basically about Olive our main character and she's tasked with figuring out who this man is. His name's Alfred and he's marrying her cousin and people don't really seem to trust him. He kind of has this suspicious aura about him because he can't really answer any questions as to who he is, his background, who his family is. And because they're in the upper class, Olive and her family, they wanna make sure that her cousin is marrying a good man. And so at this party that Olive attends, someone is murdered and even more questions arise because of this. And the story ensues from there. It was really fun. I did enjoy it. And I do think I want to read more from the series just because they are great palate cleanser books. At least this one was. So yeah, I give this three stars. A really fun book. Next up is the group read for Cloak and Dagger Christmas. And that is Silent Nights. And this is basically a collection of golden age short stories that are all mysteries. And they're kind of more obscure. So I think one of them was one that I knew about. And then another one is by a very well known author, Dorothy L. Sayers. But then the rest of them, I hadn't ever heard of them. And 
I think the purpose was to, I guess, celebrate more obscure stories and the authors. I do want to say with short stories, I tend to not have as much success, but there were definitely some gems in this collection. I'm excited to share them. And I'm not going to share the ones that I didn't enjoy as much. I'll just share the ones that I thought were great. And the first one is The Blue Carbuncle. This is by Arthur Conan Doyle. It's a Sherlock Holmes story from the Adventures of Sherlock Holmes collection. And this one is so, so much fun. It has to do with a stolen gem. And a lot of these were about theft. They weren't all about murder, but they were just so fun. And the next one is Parlor Tricks by Ralph Plummer. And I had never heard of this author before, but this one was so, so fun. And then there is The Flying Stars by G.K. Chesterton. This is my first Father Brown story, and I definitely want to read more with him. It was really, really fun. And then Waxworks by Ethel Lena White was one of my favorites. It was a little on the creepy side, but I really enjoyed it. And then by Dorothy L. Sayers, this was my introduction to Peter Whimsey. It was the short story, The Necklace of Pearls. And then the last one by Marjorie Bowen is Cambric Tea. And I thought that was great as well. A little melodramatic, but a lot of fun. So those were definitely the standouts for me. And yeah, it was an overall fun collection. I did give it three stars just because a lot of them were kind of duds for me, but overall I did have a good time with it. Next is a mystery I ended up giving three and a half stars to. I really enjoyed it. And that is The Decagon House Murders by Yukito Ayatsuji. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. And this one is actually translated from Japanese. And it's basically about this group of students who are in a mystery club and they all go to this island because on this island, this murder occurred and it's pretty legendary where they live. So this group arrives and then they start getting killed, basically. It's kind of an ode to And Then There Were None. But I think what really frustrated me was how much it tried to feel like And Then There Were None, but it just didn't succeed the way that Agatha Christie's book did, which that's completely fine. Like I wasn't expecting it to be exactly the same because then that wouldn't have been good either. But I was just hoping for it to be a little bit more original, I guess. And I did guess the ending, which I guess was okay, but I was just a little bit disappointed because I had heard that this book is amazing. Um, but I did enjoy it. I did enjoy my time reading it. It's a really quick read and it's really fast paced and atmospheric and just it kind of keeps you wanting to read more, which is great. I did like that about it. So three and a half stars. I would recommend if you are interested in, I guess, closed circle mysteries. I think it's a really great one. Just a little bit disappointed in the execution of the story itself, but not terrible. This next book, I'm not going to bother blabbering on about because I have read it three times already and I've talked about it already in my November wrap up just mentioning that I would continue my read through it in December and I'm talking about Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. It's just a story about sisters and friendship and living your dreams and family and oh my gosh my heart is just it is I can't really say it's my absolute favorite book of all time because I feel like there are other books that I could definitely argue I love more, but then at the same time, it kind of is my favorite book of all time. I'm not sure. And that also has to do with the 90s adaptation because I grew up watching that and that's my favorite movie of all time. So I guess the story itself is my favorite story ever. I just adore it so, so much and I would not change anything. And I did buddy read this with Sam from The Book Bunch and we had different feelings about Good Wives, which is like the second book in it's basically a series but little women is generally paired with good wives and that's why this one is such a long edition but with good wives just i guess some of the paths that the characters lives take sam wasn't a fan of and i completely understand why um but i think just because i grew up watching the movie and i was just convinced that it you know it worked out the way it's supposed to work out everything worked out for each character I guess, <laughs> but it's just, it's a kind of, it's the kind of book where I'll forgive things that may bother other people just because of how much I adore the story and the characters. But yeah, I had an amazing time with my reread and I think it's gonna be a yearly thing. So third year in a row, hopefully we'll read this again next year because it's just incredible. Next is Catching Christmas by Terry Blackstock. And this was the Christian book club pick for December. And I had a really great time with this one. It's a really short read as well. It's a novella. And it's basically about this taxi driver who is basically a caricature of Luke from Gilmore Girls. And that was awesome. <laughs> that was so funny. I just, I kept picturing Luke with every single word that came out of this guy's mouth. It was hilarious. And I think because of that, I can't even remember the guy's name. I just think of him as Luke. Okay, his name was Finn. <laughs> can't call him Luke because his name is Finn. And Finn, like I said, is a taxi driver and he ends up picking up an elderly woman. And she definitely shows signs of dementia among other health issues. So if that's something that's a trigger for you, I definitely wanna you know, put that out there that it does feature 
dementia and symptoms of memory loss and things like that. There are some other health issues that are featured, but I feel like one of them would be a spoiler. So I don't want to say what it is, but just look up the trigger warnings if you would like to. But this book was really sweet. I gave it four stars and Finn picks up this woman, takes her to her appointment and just keeps finding himself having to pick her up and drive her around. And it gets to a point where he gets extremely frustrated because he is worried that he, first of all, won't be making money to pay his rent. Second of all, he's just tired of having to do everything for her because she forgets a lot of things. And basically his entire day is just helping this elderly woman. The other main character is Sydney and she's actually the granddaughter of said woman. And she is basically drowning in work. She's trying to keep her job because she's scared that she's gonna get fired. They've been letting a lot of people go and she works in a law firm and she, because of this, can't care for her grandma and it definitely has consequences. And then Sydney and Finn, their paths cross and the story just continues from there. It was really sweet. But yeah, it was a great story. I did really enjoy it. I just feel like I didn't connect to it as much and I struggle with shorter stories and novellas just to, you know, make those connections with the characters, but it was really fun and I think it has a great faith message. So it's definitely a great one to read around the Christmas season as it is set around Christmas time. So definitely enjoyed it and I would definitely recommend as well. I actually forgot to mention the other mystery that I read this month and that is Still Life by Louise Penny. This was my first Inspector Gamache Three Pines story and I had such a great time with it. I gave this one four stars and this one fulfills the foiling on the cover prompt. I hadn't realized that when I did my December TBR video because I think I had chosen a different book for that prompt, but this one definitely fits it. So this one is about Inspector Gamache who is called to this small village, Three Pines in Quebec, and a suspicious death occurred basically, and he is called to help solve it. And along the way, he meets some very, very interesting characters. We meet a lot of people in this book, and there isn't much else about the plot that I can say other than the woman who died, it's not really confirmed at the very beginning if she was murdered or if it was an accidental death or what actually happened, but the people of this village seemed to absolutely adore this woman. So Inspector Gamash comes and he's just trying to figure out the dynamics of this community. And one of the reasons I didn't give this five stars was just because of how many characters were introduced at the very beginning. And I was a little bit confused trying to figure out who is who. But once I really got to know them, it just became such a special story to me and I loved each of the characters. I will say that there is some language, so if that's something you don't enjoy, I just wanted to put that out there. But overall, such a solid first book in a series and I cannot wait to read the rest of them. The small village, small town vibes are just perfect. And Armand as a character is one of my absolute favorites already and I've only read one book with him. His personality is just the absolute best. He is such a sweet man and has such a desire to have to live in a just world. And it's just so inspiring to me. I really love that the author didn't make him out to be this perfect man, you know, who has no faults or anything, but he definitely has a heart of gold and just wants people to be happy and to just live in peace, basically. There are some other amazing characters in this book, including Clara and Ruth and Myrna, and they're all just so special. And oh my goodness, I can't wait to read more of the series. I feel like I already know the characters and I think going on to book two, it's just gonna feel like coming home. So I would definitely recommend this book. Just be aware that there's language and it just may not suit everyone's tastes because it is a little bit on the slower side in terms of pacing, but it's a great story for sure. And the last book that I need to talk about is The Dawn of Redeeming Grace by Sinclair B. Ferguson. And this is my first ever Advent devotional. I have never observed Advent. I never grew up observing it, even though I grew up in church. It's just not something that I guess my church, my family really did. But I am so, so glad that I read this book and I plan on observing Advent as much as I can every year now. It's just such a special way of focusing our minds and our hearts on the reason for Christmas and the coming of the Messiah. And it's just, this devotional was absolutely beautiful. This one I actually listened to, so it felt very much like I was sitting down and having a cup of coffee with Sinclair B. Ferguson because he narrated the audiobook, which was an awesome experience. And it felt like a sermon, but not like a sermon in the sense of, I didn't feel like I was being preached down to. It just, it felt so beautiful and deep and jam packed with wisdom in such few words. It is an Advent devotional. So I was supposed to keep reading it until the 24th, but I couldn't stop. 
I just kept listening to it and then I, it actually got to a point where I was listening to the days over and over again like I just kept re-listening to them because I couldn't get enough of it but if you're looking for an advent devotional if you haven't started one and you still want to squeeze one in this one is shorter the audiobook is I think four hours which is pretty short for an audiobook so you could listen to you know like half an hour a day and get the book read um by Christmas or around Christmas. You could extend it even into the week after Christmas. It doesn't really matter, but it's such a beautiful, beautiful devotional. And it's definitely one of my favorite nonfictions that I've ever read. I have absolutely nothing negative to say about this. It was just beautiful. All right, everyone. So that is it for the books that I have finished in the first couple weeks of December. It was a crazy first two weeks, but I'm really, really happy that I managed to read because life, stress, <laughs> but I have said it before, like reading is therapy for me. So I need to make time each day to read when I can, obviously. And the filming is what fell on the back burner. I had to kind of prioritize, am I going to read or am I going to film? Reading for sure. It had to take priority for me. But that is it for my mid-month wrap up. Let me know what you guys are reading, what you've been enjoying this month. And if you guys are also reading anything Advent related, I'd love to know. So like I said, that's it for this video. Thank you all so, so much for watching. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye.